welcome friends to the lecture series of the course uh, marketing research and analysis. Uh, in the last uh, few classes we have been talking about uh, conducting non parametric tests basically right. So, what is this uh, non parametric test as we had seen that non parametric tests are basically the tests which are conducted when the data uh, does not uh, follow a normal distribution right. So, if the data does not follow a normal distribution the rule says that most of the statistical tests that you do they would be invalid if the data is not normal in nature. So, I hope you understand normal means when the data follows a Bell's curve right and the uh, mean median mode they all lie on the central the on the uh, um, mean uh, on the middle uh, line on the middle portion. So, right. So, uh, when uh, when the distribution is not normal of the data and it is more or less skewed or it is uh, peaked or something. So, in such a condition a non parametric test is preferred over the parametric test right. One more thing is that during the non parametric tests the data is uh, measured on a nominal or a ordinal scale instead of uh, uh, like in a um, parametric test you have the data on a continuous scale which we measure through basically like a interval or a uh, you know ratio scale right the data is continuous in nature mostly. But on the other, in this case the data is follows a uh, uh, non normal and it is mostly measured on a ordinal or a nominal scale right. And uh, one of two the two popular tests that we had seen was one of the uh, was one of them called the man Whitney test man Whitney uh, U test right. So, we said this test uh, uh, was uh, similar to the independent sample t test independent sample t test in a parametric uh, condition right. So, uh, you have independent sample t test for a normally distributed data and for a and for similarly this uh, when you have two samples different samples, but they are not normal in nature you do a man Whitney u test. But uh, we also did the when suppose you have more than two uh, sample groups right and then you cannot measure the two sample and you cannot you should not be doing multiple t tests in such a condition. Uh, for a normal data you use the analysis of variance right and on the other hand if the same in the same condition when the data is not uh, normal or it is a non normal data then we use the Kruskal values Kruskal values test right. So, uh, let us see how today we will do some more of this non parametric test and uh, try to utilize them in our uh, uh, research and academics as much as possible. Many times I have seen people uh, avoiding non parametric tests they, because they feel non parametric tests are not powerful, but then so be it if it is not powerful it does not mean it should not be used. Because it is uh, because the data demands or the data's condition is uh, in such a manner that there you cannot use a, a parametric test then you have you are left with very little option, but to conduct the non parametric ones right. So, we said hypothesis testing which is the most important uh, part for any researcher to test the hypothesis whether it is the null hypothesis to be accepted or the alternate hypothesis to accepted we always try to test that. And the researchers intention is always to measure the alternate to see that the alternate is approved. So, parametric non parametric and we said z test t test 1 by ANOVA and here you have man Whitney, Wilcoxon, Kruskal values and so sign test run runs test many other tests right. So, non parametric test as I uh, repeat I will repeat again are hypothesis testing procedures that assumes that the variables are measured on a nominal or ordinal scale as I just told you right. So, you know what is a nominal scale? Basically, a nominal scale is something which is uh, just like a code. For example, the roll number, the roll number, the jersey number of a player, right. So, these are all nominal. So, they are only for coding, the purpose is to identify, okay. But, however, if suppose the data is also in ordinal, that means it is in an order rank 1, rank 2, rank 3, rank 4, suppose, then also in such a condition we can use the the non parametric test right. So, basically if you see these are categorical datas, categorical datas mostly utilized. Now, after the uh, uh, man Whitney u test and the Kruskal values test which we had done which uh, I said uh, represented the independent sample t test uh, sample t test t test 
right uh, and the an an analysis of variance right one way analysis of variance we are coming to a new test called the runs test now let us see <coughs> what is this runs test the general assumption of selection of samples here is that they are randomly selected that is without any preference or bias now what does it mean suppose let us say uh, a quality control manager is testing some of the products right and while testing he is assuming that the the uh, the the pattern of the uh, the data that he is checking is in a random basis right there can be two things either it is a random or it can be systemic in nature suppose it is systemic in nature then there is some scope for correction you can do some correction over that right some there's some systematic uh, problem is there but if it is uh, random then it is very difficult so the general assumption of selection of samples is that they are randomly selected that is there is no preference or bias ok. Runs test is a test of randomness for a dichotomous variable. So, it is basically it takes 0 and 1 right you can say 0 and 1 as the 2 yes or no condition. So, it is a, a binomial condition. This test is conducted by determining whether the order or sequence in which the observations are obtained is random. Now, what do I mean by it? Let us say, uh, I will show you an example, but I am just giving a brief. Let us say, uh, uh, the manager is checking whether the, uh, suppose uh, the computers, uh, what is the condition of the computers? Suppose, is the first computer that came, uh, he checked was a good one, right? The second was a good one, the third was a good one, the fourth was a defective item, had some defect, the fourth, the fifth one also had some defect, sixth was good, seventh good, eighth good, ninth good, tenth good, eleventh again defective, twelfth defective, suppose, thirteenth defective, suppose, right? So, what is the order or sequence in which the observations are obtained that is to be checked, right? A run is defined as a sequence of identical occurrences proceed, proceeded and followed by different occurrences or none at all. Now, what does it mean? Now, when I say let us say this is good, 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 then defective, defective. So, what is the what is the you know it says what is the sequence of occurrences. Now, how many goods have come in one time then what is the defective what where did this break basically where did that pattern break right. So, let us say there are 2 here then again you have 5 a uh, good then maybe 3 defective. So, ultimately you can see this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, there are 4 groups you can say. It can be effectively used where it can be used the question comes it can be used effectively in quality control situations as I had I, am ex I had been explaining you. It helps in detecting whether the variation in quality is systematic or random and accordingly action can be taken. I hope you are understanding. So, in a quality control situation suppose the uh, the quality control manager is finding that the the uh, arrangement of this uh, or the occurrence of this uh, you know uh, machines or the product or the whatever the you know goods are in a particular order and whether that is order of occurrence is random or non random in nature. If it is random then it is a different thing, but if it is non random then we would have to look into it why there is a non random uh, basis because randomness means there is no preference there is no bias right. But if there is a, a systematic or a non random occurrence then there might be some problem which can be can be corrected ok. So, let us take a problem. So, a manufacturer of breakfast cereals right is using a machine to insert randomly one of two types of toys you must have seen nowadays companies like uh, even McDonald's uh, you know uh, um, uh, this uh, ch there are chocolates in which the, within the chocolate there will be small small uh, you know uh, toys to attract uh, uh, the children's right. So, um, so these toys are being put into the uh, let us say the breakfast cereal boxes ok. So, the company wants randomness, why does the company want randomness? So, that every child in the neighborhood does not get the same toy. See if the if every child gets the same toy then the, the children's would feel there is no fun. So, and you know how uh, human psychology is, so children's also have their own uh, you know competition among themselves ki whether my toy is better than yours or yours toy is better than mine or this competition goes on. 
So, if the company inserts the same toy then there is no fun for the children in fact they would feel ki whether there is no difference so it is all the same right. So, in order to create an excitement among the children the company wants to ensure that different toys are put it in the boxes so that the children can have some form of excitement. Now, testers choose samples of 60 successive boxes. So, 60 successive boxes you know uh, the serial boxes were taken to see whether the machine is properly mixing the two types of toys right. So, using the symbols A and B to represent the two types of toys a tester reported that one such batch looked like this. Now, what is this let us see. So, first if you see B type of toy in the first serial box second one A B B B A A A B B A B B. So, it goes on right till you reach to the 60th this is the first this is the 60th correct. So, uh, the 60th box also they have put in. So, now the company wants to know okay, whether the the occurrence of this toys is in a random order or is this not in a random order ok. So, the values in our test will be now what n 1 and n 2. So, let us see what is the n 1 let us say n 1 let us take how many b's are there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So, you can see so n 2 so b right toy b is 31 and n 1 is obviously 30, 60 minus 31 is 29. So, what is the r? Now, let us look at the r. Now, r is we are saying the continuity of the occurrence of a uh, particular type of uh, goods or pro, uh, service or product let us say. So, let us say what is the occurrence of uh, b and a in this case let us say. So, you see uh, for example, here. So, there is only one b and then there is an a. So, this is one this is two then b b b. So, this is one group three then a a a a 4 right can you understand why it is 1 because all 3 are con continuously coming right then 5 right 6 7 8 9 right. So, 10 right 11 12 13 14 15 16 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So, there are 29 runs that is what it is trying to say if you see here. So, r is equal to 29 the number of runs is 29. So, what it says a run is a sequence of identical occurrence preceded and followed by different occurrences or by none at all. So, you can simple way you can understand ki whether the continuity is there or it is breaking if there is a breaking then it is a new uh, new run right. The number of runs or r r is a statistic with its own special sampling distribution and its own test. Obviously, runs may be of different lengths obviously, we have seen it uh, somewhere it was 1, somewhere 2, somewhere 3, 4 and various numbers of runs can occur in one sample. Statisticians can prove that too many or too few runs in a sample indicate that something other than chance was at work. Now, what does this mean? Suppose you see the number of runs is too few this that what does that mean that means the number of similar products occurring co constantly was on a very high level right. Suppose on the other hand the number of runs is too small let us say or uh, uh, sorry is too lengthy let us say right. So, uh, is too many is too many or too few. So, the first case was too few. So, too few runs means most of the day, uh, most of the occurrence was at continuously there for a longer time, but when it is too many that means what only for maybe one time it is occurring and then it is not occurring maybe then uh, again it is occurring after some time. So, the number of runs has increased ok. So, what does it mean if it is too many or too few then you will see in a sample that something other than chance was at work. So, it is not random there is some problem in it. 
A one sample runs test is based on the idea that too few or too many runs show that the items were not chosen randomly and there is a systematic problem. To derive the mean of the sampling distribution, let us use the formula. So, the what is the formula? The formula is as it is written 2 n 1 n 2 divided by n 1 plus n 2 then plus 1 right. Now, taking this you have that means how much 2 into 29 n 1 n 2 is 31 divided by 31 plus 29 60 plus 1. So, my mean of the R statistic is how much na 30.97. So, what do I require to have my calculation? So, I will uh, to uh, calculate I need my standard error also correct. So, let us see the standard error is how much can be calculated as 2 n 1 n 2 into whole over 2 n 1 n 2 minus n 1 minus n 2 divided by n 1 plus n 2 square whole square into n 1 plus n 2 minus 1. Now, let us do this here it is done you can just check. So, 2 into 29 into 31 whole over then 2 into 29 into 31 n 1 n 2 minus 29 minus 31 divided by root over of 29 plus 31 square which is 60 then 29 plus 31 minus 1. So, this gives to 14.71 or is equal to 3.84. So, we have the value of we have our mu we have our standard error. So, can we calculate the z? No, yeah let us see let us go by it. In the one sample run test the sampling distribution of r can be closely now this is very important please uh, check. The sampling distribution of R can be closely approximated by the normal distribution if either n 1 or n 2 is larger than 20. If it is larger than 20, then it automatically follows a normal distribution. A serial in this case has a sample of 60 boxes. So, we have 60 and both n 1 and n 2 are if I 29 and 31. So, which is bigger than the magic number of 20. Okay. So, the management is interested now in testing at what level Now 20 percent. So, what is my 20 percent? Now, 20 percent is my significance level. The hypothesis that the toys are randomly mixed. Now, taking a significance level is uh, depends upon the uh, choice of the researcher right. At what level the researcher wants to test his hypothesis mostly we take 1 percent, 5 percent, 10 percent even 20 percent you can take. So, in this case he is taking 20 percent what happens when you increase the significance level. It means that when you increase your alpha that means what the tendency to make your type 1 error is increasing. Okay. So, that means what I, I am the manufacturer is taking a risk to rather uh, lose a few of the good, good products rather than testing it again and again right that is the literal meaning of it. So, what is my null hypothesis? The toys are randomly mixed, it is random. So, this is always my null hypothesis in the R test, right. What is my alternate? The toys are not randomly mixed. See, uh, you generally some, some people might be getting uh, confused that we use the word not in case of a null. No, no, it is not like that. We always have said ki whatever we want to disprove that is my null hypothesis most of the time right. So, the most we in this case what is the ra random uh, was the null hypothesis the toys are randomly mixed and we want to we want to see whether it is it is actually not random right. So, that is what we want to know. So, what we want to know is my not randomly mixed is my alternate alpha is 20 percent and the level the value of 20 percent that means what if you go to the area under the curve. So, how does it look? So, this is let us say is there, uh, remember one more thing it is always a two tailed it is mostly the runs test is a two tailed test. Now, why it is a two tailed test because it can be lesser than and it can be more than. So, 0 0.10 here 0 0.10 here 20 percent I have divided. So, and this portion is my 0 0.40 0 0.40 correct. So, total makes 100 or 1. So, the value at 0.20 or 20 percent level of significance the alpha the z value a table value is 1.28 plus or minus 1.28. So, because too many or too few runs would indicate that the process by which the toys are 
inserted into the boxes is not random, a two tail test is appropriate. That is what I was saying is not random. So, if it is not random, it could be either side correct. So, that is why it is a two tail test and most of the time the runs test follows a two tail test. So, we use the following equations to standardize the sample R statistic 29 by subtracting mu it is uh, uh, mu it is mean and dividing by so that is the z formula right you if you remember z is equal to we said x earlier we used to for use this, this general formula upon the standard x right standard error. So, here instead of uh, uh, x we have the r which we have the number of runs minus the mu and other things remain the same. So, our value is minus 0 0.513. So, it is towards the negative side right left tailed placing the standardized value on the z scale shows that it falls well in the acceptance region. Now, what is my acceptance region? So, z plus or minus plus or minus 1.28 this is 0. So, this minus 1.28 plus 1.28. To it, right. So, wh where is the our value lying? Now, minus to the this is minus, this is minus 0 0.5, let us say 5, let us say 0 0.5. So, that means what therefore, what should the management do? Since it is lying within, well within the range, the management cannot reject the null hypothesis. So, he should accept the null hypothesis. Actually, the word should accept is not to be used, it is not the correct word. So, it should be said the management cannot reject the null hypothesis and conclude from this test that toys are being inserted into the boxes in a random order, right. So, what it is saying? The management accepts the null hypothesis that the toys were being put into the boxes or placed into the boxes in a random manner. Okay. Okay. So, this is the first test that we uh, talked about. So, if you uh, see the uh, the use of a uh, runs test can be in uh, in many ways right. So, as you see um, suppose uh, the uh, you know in a in a in a shop or in a in a mall or in a you know uh, um, uh, quality control check. So, wherever this kind of things are happening right whether the satisfaction or level, dissatisfaction level of a customer in a store right. So, we want to just see ki whether the customer are happy or not and what is the occurrence of their happiness or unhappiness these things. So, we use the runs test. I hope the runs test is clear to you. The next test that we talk about is called the sign test. Now, what is the sign test? Now, if you see the sign test is not a very powerful test although but uh, it has its own application. Okay. Now, let us see what is the sign test. The sign test is a test for examining differences in the location of two populations based on the paired observations that compares only the signs. So, suppose somebody has got let us say in the exam 29, another fellow has got 30. So, let us if we compare this has got more. So, to say this, so we will say suppose we are taking this as the choice. So, plus right in another paper this fellow has got let us say 28 and he has got 27. So, minus. So, when we are comparing this way, so we have a one reference group. So, let us say 31, 30 and this is 29. So, again minus. So, we are doing this. It compares the sign of the differences between the pair of variables without taking into account the ranks. So, the ranks are not to be taken here, it is only the sign. Its name comes from the fact that it is based on the direction of a pair of observations not on their numerical magnitude. So, that is why since there is no numerical magnitude this uh, test is not a very strong test although I will show you there is another test called the Wilcoxon sign rank, uh, sign, rank uh, sign, uh, rank test that is more powerful than this one, but still let me explain uh, both of these tests and you can use this one also for your academic researches. Assumptions data should be from two samples. So, there are two sample groups let us say group 1, group 2. The two dependent samples should be paired or matched. So, you should you, you are pairing or you are comparing. So, that is what we are doing we are comparing. So, one we are comparing one against the other. For example, depression scores from before a medical procedure and after. You remember the, if you if you remember when we were talking about the parametric tests. So, when we were saying ki suppose a medicine is being given to a person to reduce his blood pressure what we were doing? We were taking checking the blood pressure before 
right of a set of patients maybe 40 patients 50 patients and then we were giving them the drug and then after a month or two months or something a time period we were again checking the blood pressure of the patients and seeing whether there is a significant difference and if there is a difference we would to say that it is because of the medicines impact of the medicine right. So, it is a similar test it is a similar test only thing is here we are taking only the sign but otherwise the procedure or the thinking process remains the same. Let us take a problem consider the result of a test panel of 40 college juniors evaluating the effectiveness of two types of classes large lectures by full professors and small sections by graduate assistants. So, in a college you, you must have also faced this situation many a times the uh, uh, lectures are been taken by full professors not uh, it is almost all the time, but sometimes the graduate assistants also do help the professors and they help in taking some tutorials and some classes. Okay. So, uh, they wanted to check ki whether the effectiveness of these two types of classes are same or it is there is some difference because we ca always cannot say that a professor only teaches well and the assistants are not that good because maybe the assistant is also going to be a professor he might be a very intelligent boy or a person so uh, or a girl. So, in such a condition let us check whether the effectiveness of these two type of classes remains the same or is it different. Okay. The responses to this request indicate how you rate the effectiveness in transmitting knowledge of these two type of classes by giving them a number from 4 to 1 right. A rating of 4 is excellent and 1 is poor suppose somebody is I have taken a class and you give me a rate of 4 then it is an excellent class. Suppose you give a rate of uh, 1 it is not a good class a poor class right. In this case the sign test can help us determine whether students feel there is a difference between the effectiveness of the two types of classes one taken by the large the lecture the professors and the other by the assistants or the, the graduate assistants. The evaluation of two methods these two teaching methods is converted into signs ok. So, you have given score and this course from this course we will develop the signs. Here a plus sign means the student prefers large lectures taken by the professors. A minus sign indicates a preference for small sections and a 0 represents a tie no preference. So, what is saying large lectures if it is a preference plus if, uh, if it is a preference for small sections or taken by the graduate assistants minus and no preference then it is a tie 0. So, let us take this 40 students. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 20 you can see here then 21, 22 goes up to 40 here right. So, the first like first case the student gives for the large lecture a score of 2 and for here the for the small lectures it gives a score of 3. So, the large lectures were being taken by the professor now the graduate students are taking only few students maybe 5, 10 small sections. So, maybe they are able to focus on them 1 to 1 on a 1 to 1 basis individually. So, maybe the students like them. So, what is the uh, sign of the score now 2 minus 3 is minus. So, this is a minus second case here also gets a 2 here also gets a 2 right. So, uh, in this actually this should have been uh, actually it is a it is a mistake it should have been 0 actually right. So, it should have been 0 right. So, it is 4 2 in this case. So, it is a plus ok 4 3 plus 3 4 minus. So, you can understand 3 2 plus. So, the preference is here here the preference is again here preference is here preference is here there is no preference is a tie similar as it was a tie here right. So, here again preference no preference no preference no preference preference this one is the preference here this one is the preference no preference. So, it goes on right. So, you can see you can you can carry on. So, till the 40th you have done. So, analysis of the table provides if I do not know whether I have uh, I have to correct this one or not anyway that is not important it is just a number. So, let us say the number of positive signs if you add now these are the positive signs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 right. So, let us say the 19 is the number of signs positive and 11 signs were negative. So, it could be now it can be different also I do not know whether we can change it uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, it is now 10 right and this automatically sorry 
19 plus 10 29 then it becomes 11 so right that can be changed ok. So, uh, just uh, because I have already solved it so let us keep it as it is. We are using the sign test to determine whether our panel can discern a real difference between the two types of classes. So, what is the objective to find out ki whether there is a real difference existing between the difference uh, existing between the two types of classes the professors large one and the graduate assistant small one. Because we are testing perceived differences we shall exclude the tie evaluation that is the 0. So, we can have 19 plus signs and 11 assume it is now 10 actually is assume it is 11 right for a total of 30 usable responses. If there is no difference between the two types of classes the probability that the first score exceeds the second score would be 0.5 and we would expect to get about 15 plus and 15 minus n. So, the, what is my, my null hypothesis? My null hypothesis says no difference between the two types of classes this is generally how we frame the null hypothesis. So, what is my probability 50 percent 50 percent so 0 0.5 0 0.5 right. And second case is my alternate where it is saying there is a difference between the two type of classes. So, my p is not equal to 0.5. So, it may be more for someone for less for the other. If you look carefully at the hypothesis you will see that the situation is similar to the fair coin toys right in a in a uh, which generally in a binomial distribution we talk about a toy uh, co to, uh, tossing a coin and uh, what is the result coming up right. So, if we toss a fair coin 30 times p would be 0.5 the null hypothesis and we would expect about 15 heads and 15 tails that is what is my probability the null hypothesis. In this case we would use the binomial distribution this is what I am talking about as an appropriate sampling distribution right because it is only it is a yes or no right. When n p and n q are each at least 5 we can use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial right. So, we if you remember we had also done this earlier when we are talking about testing of hypothesis based on proportions right you remember if you remember just you can go back to your uh, earlier slides also or earlier uh, notes. This is just the case with the results from our panel of college juniors thus we can apply the normal distribution to our test because we have a more than 5 right. So, so what is my let us see uh, my null hypothesis 0 0.5 my alternate let us say uh, the, the ones the hypothesis proportional population we prefer large lectures is 0 0.5 prefer small lectures is again 0 0.5 my n is 30 19 plus 11 my p the rate of success is 19 divided by 30. So, the you remember the number of success of the lectures is 19 positive. So, 19 divided by 30 what is the failure now failure is 11 obviously if it is total is 30 19 is my success then obviously 11 is left so 11 by 30. Suppose the chancellor's office wants to test the hypothesis that there is no difference between student perception of the two type of classes at the 5 percent level of significance. Let us calculate. So, what is the formula? Standard error of proportion is p into q by n root over of p into q by n. So, 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 divided by 30. So, this gives me a 0 0.091. What else do we require? So, because we want to know whether the true proportion is larger or smaller than the hypothesized proportion this is a two tail test it can be because it can fall on either side right left side or right side right. Level of significance is 5 percent so the table value is 1.96 plus or minus. So, the equation is now z is equal to what is the equation we use the following equation to standardize the sample proportion p bar by subtracting p s 0. So, that means what this is the observed you can say this is the my mean right you can as you compare with that right. So, the uh, p bar minus p s 0 hypothesized divided by the standard error of proportion gives me a value of 1.462. So, the z value that we calculate is now 1.462. So, if you put this value on the standardized on the compare on the z scale it shows that this is within the boundary that is it is less within the 1.96 range right. So, uh, plus 1.96 minus 1.96. So, it is within this range. So, somewhere here it is falling. So, therefore, the chancellor should accept the null hypothesis that students perceived no difference between the two type of classes right. So, through the science test you can also find out whether the preference for a, a product or a, a service is there or not in this case a, the lecture which lecture is better the teacher the lecturer one or the let us say the so graduate student one. So, you can do this through a sign rank test right. 
So, uh, what I will do is uh, I think uh, we have done two tests today. So, we have first done with the runs test right which has own application and utility and then we started with the sign test and we said the sign test may not be a very powerful test right, but it has its own application and it is very interesting that today by just uh, you know comparing two values or two different parameters and through the developing signs you can say whether a hypothesis you can check the hypothesis whether the hypo null hypothesis is to be accepted uh, is to be rejected or the alternate has to be accepted right. So, uh, anyway so i think uh, uh, i have tried to make it clear and we have understood with the following the two tests and in the next session in the next lecture we'll discuss about we'll continue with some more non parametric test and uh, uh, then we'll uh, move to something else right uh, thank you very much have a wonderful time